Andusian. Saturday of the Mela is the day of announced separation. It's just one more day. The first devotees are leaving already. Swami Maharaj is leaving us today. Bon Maharaj is leaving us tomorrow. So it's, it's something to meditate about very seriously. What is it really? What's going on? The nature of this world is coming together and leaving each other again. That is, that is something that is very deep, deeply going into the heart of the living beings and it churns the feeling of separation. And as the feeling of separation is churned, the feeling of longing also manifests the longing for the next mela. <laughs> so in this way, uh, we, we are continuing this, the beautiful spiritual journey. Mm. And this supposed to end up in Goloka Vendam. And if that is so, hopefully soon, then it would be really, would have been a delightful journey, a delightful experience, including all the tears we have to cry in separation. Now, tears of separation or tears of anguish, tears of not being a pure devotee, tears of not having pure love of Krishna flow through our body. This is, uh, this is something which is the training faith. We are being trained up. And it is, uh, if you look at it closely, minutely, you will see that it is, uh, it's a part of the game, even in Krishna Lila, so much separation is going on. In Rama Lila, so much separation Lila is there. In Gora Lila, so much separation Lila is there. Separation from Vishnu Priya, separation from beloved Sachimata. separation. to do the needful. Mahaprabhu takes sannyas, he leaves. For the devotees of Navadvip, this is a devastating blow on their heart's feeling of comfort because they're so comfortable being close to their Lord and Master, their beloved Mahaprabhu. Can you imagine Mahaprabhu in your town? You can see him every night, dance there with him. Can you imagine Shukadeva Goswami in the womb of his mother? When he finally is born, he simply runs out of the house and disappears. And it says when his father called after him, only the echo from the trees responded to him. Dhruva Maharaj, he went away from his home in disgust. You imagine how his mother was feeling. Even his father, who had caused the, the, the disastrous reaction in Dhruva Maharaj, even he was so deeply touched. Where's Dhruva? He's gone. I think he was six years old. Where's Dhruva? He, where did he go? He went into the forest. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, and uh, one story which is not exactly the same thing, but I I tell this because Gopananda Bonmar spoke about this twice, and he didn't end the story because when Shingama Dev insisted to Pralad that you ask something from me. He insisted 
And Prahlad said, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. Seeing you is so much more than I could ever have expected. Why am I going to make business with you now and ask you for something in return of, for what you feel I did for you? Sorry, my Lord, I can't. But then the Lord said, Panchi, if I come and you don't give, get anything from me, I feel like pretty useless, you know? Coming all the way here and now you don't ask nothing, you know, you just want to look at me and like that. I mean, <laughs> so, so he insisted so much that finally Prahlad said, okay, I ask you something. So what? Can you save my father? You know, this rascal. I mean, he behaved so badly. He did everything wrong he could do wrong. But you are, you are the supreme powerful uh, personality, so if you forgive him, then he will be redeemed and he will be saved. Can you do that? And then the, I think somewhere around there comes this instruction that Prahlad, you don't worry about that. I think eight generations or how many generations are saved? of a devotee, yeah. seven? Seven generations before you were born, seven generations after you are, after you, they're already saved by your devotional, pure devotional influence. So, Hiranya Kashipu got a thumbs up there. Mm -hmm. huh? I mean, he was ready, I mean, killed by Nishinga Deva. Nothing to worry about, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was a, a great way to part from this world, no? But he gave it. He gave it this, uh, this unbelievable touch that Pralat, being tortured by his father, he was still feeling affection for him. <laughs> that shows you how much affection you should have for your parents, huh? Doesn't matter whether they are devotees or not, no? I don't think any of your parents is like Hiranya Kashipu, you know? <laughs> uh, uh. So, devotion, movements, emotions, this is the life. And sometimes it's, it goes deep into the, the heart, into the family, union, separation. And even in the preachings like that, you preach to somebody and then before you know it he's going through another con continent, another country and you can't see him anymore. So this is also the Mela is a celebration of union and separation. Union as we arrive here and we greet each other. Krishna Kirtan, from Poland you have come. Huh? Madhurya, you came. Gupta, after one year not seeing you. Like that. And about everybody who comes, our hearts jumps, rejoices. Premsita, again. What's that? <laughs> Who is that? Mayapur. Mayapur, bye bye. <laughs> you are making my class come alive. <laughs> Separation. <laughs> so, this is. I mean, that's their fault. They bought the ticket a day too early. No? But anyhow, this is just to, to teach us Vipra love. In Berlin, no? Vergiss uns nicht. So the, the mood of the 
coming together in the Mela is so amazing. And then the days are coming, the days are intensifying, and then we have to go to continue our service. And continuing our service, that implies so many things. For example, the Vrihastas. The Vrihastas have to worry about how to provide an adequate education to their children. You see our children, they're so sweet, they're so nice. We can almost like, they're almost like sweet balls. I mean, you shouldn't eat them, but, but they're like uh, dancing, attractive, charismatic. I mean, children, Opishma, Kijai. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is this is such a such a wonderful thing, you know, the children. But the children in this world. Yesterday I had a long conversation with the young guitar player from Germany. What's his name? Lino. Nino. Lino. Lino. Yeah, we had a very nice, and he's, uh, he just comes out of the school system, kind of, you know, and he has such a vision, you know, kind of like when you hear him, you, what he has not seen yet, even though he hasn't seen so much because he's a young guy, you know, but what he has not appreciated yet, what he has not suffered in one way. So our children, you know, you know that our children, They are the children of the most difficult time in history. Never ever has a child had such a difficult upbringing as a child today has. Just imagine that. There's not even a comparison. I myself was a leader in my youth, like eight, nine years. I started reading the newspaper, special journals of political messages, and I was devastated. I was reading some of the things that happened in the Second World War and all of that. I said, where am I? It can't be real. What am I doing here? What, a, what kind of desire must I have had to be here? It was not horrible. It was far beyond <coughs> horrible. It was unacceptable. And then, in that utter disgust, and I knew of what the children know today, maybe 2%, <coughs> <coughs> and I was devastated. I say, is it cannot be possible. Because like, we are so sensible people, sensitive. We would not tolerate even if one person is stung by a bee or a wasp. I mean, tolerate means we would immediately enter into action. Hey, how to help you? What's your problem? No, just stung by a bee. Something can happen in the summer here like many times, no? But what to speak if one person will just mistreat the other openly in front of the others? We would not tolerate it. Immediately we would, we would have to into, enter into action. We would even have to stop this class to simply say, hey, this cannot go on. So this is the, the, the emotional reality of relationship. And then you go around and you see, there is the animals in the animal factory suffering like anything. Then you see in the next house, the husband is beating his wife mercilessly in front of the children. Children are traumatized. 
and and then you know the rest of the story. I don't have to go enter into details. So, where am I? Why am I here in this world? And why am I <coughs> potentially also a bad guy? I mean, this is this is a question we should ask ourselves. How can we potentially be nasty? And this is what our children have to deal with. Of course, in the principle, every human being has to deal with everything all the time. Prahlad Maharaj had to deal with Hiranyakashipu, and that's millions of years ago. So it's not the problems are born now, no? At least Prahlad Maharaj didn't have a handy. <laughs> At least he didn't have to suffer the modern, we, we called it yesterday in our conversation, <coughs> the internet prison. It's a prison. It holds you prisoner. If you're not very, very careful about your other relationships and to make sure they are all adequate and well taken care of, the, you, 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 the internet just it sucks you up and makes you a prisoner. Emotional prisoner, physical prisoner. And then before you know it, you find out your children are prisoners already also. The internet is so craftily designed that it makes prisoners without a, hey, don't push too lassi. The prison of the prisoner of the internet means that we are so overloaded with information that Practically, we all want to say something. So the internet encourages you, make a movie, record a speech, send a message, give a commentary, say something about this, say something about that, give a like or a dislike. Huh? You have thumbs down also on the internet? Mm -hmm. Huh? Not anymore. On YouTube, yes. You used to have? Mm -hmm. On YouTube, yes. Yes? Yeah, yeah. So you have thumbs down, it means you can send somebody to hell. Mm -hmm. Huh? You know where the thumbs down came from? <laughs> that was from the, from the Coliseum where the people would vote whether the person was going to be saved or be eaten by the tigers or something like that in front of everybody. <laughs> this sums down, it's not really a good sympathetic uh, move. Huh? So, the internet tells you, come on, give us your opinion. Be yourself, be somebody, talk. Write an article, make a movie, publish it for free. Have your own books published, yes. And then of course you get information how Tom, Dick or Harry got one million friends and likes and you think, ooh, that could be me. That famous outstanding personality could be me. Well, you also get 20 visits on your, on your whatever, which is probably you yourself looking 20 times whether somebody else has come to look at it. Huh? Huh? <laughs> it's so amazing. Now, the internet 
it shuts all of us up. Not by telling us to shut up. No. The internet shuts us, shuts us up by telling us all, speak. Maybe you have seen that, that two old people especially, they're so eager to speak that they speak simultaneously. And the others nobody hears. So the internet has us all speaking, all writing, all opinion, giving opinion. Nobody reads it. Nobody has time to read what the others have to say. Even if you say, ah, he is my friend, I like him. Okay, give him a like. But that's all. So, it's a very crafty thing. I mean, I, I guess it's the age of Kali in its maximum exposition because we are all prisoners. And then you watch your emails and then you get your newsletters and this and that. And the separation is from the people you live with. You have hardly time to look in their eyes, hardly time to touch them, hardly time to say something sweet to them, like, you know something? Number one, I love you. Number two, I am grateful, grateful, grateful that I was born in a time and a place that I can meet you. Ah, no, I don't believe you. You don't believe me? Well, let me tell you another thing. I want to know what you like. And I want to do something to please that wish of yours. Ah, no. What do you mean, no? Yes. I mean, what it means to give a gift. Gift is such an important thing of life. It's even mentioned in the Vaishnava scriptures. Dadati prati grinati guyamakyati prichate bhumte bochayate chaiva tat prativiti lak shandam. There are six loving exchanges amongst human beings which should all be practiced in relationship with the Vaishnavas, especially. But it, number one is, is Mm -hmm. Offering items. Giving a gift. First thing. Hi, my friend. What? I have something for you. What? For me? Yes. And you give some items. Okay. <coughs> but say, what am I going to do? That's for you. You give this to me. Like sometimes people give valuable things to others, no? I mean, giving a gift is not just simply giving a, giving a flower. Even though a flower is symbolically a gift of love, so it's, uh, uh, say it through a flower, the flower salesman say. Uh, <laughs> Red roses. Hmm? <laughs> like that. So, giving a gift is right there. And receiving gifts also. Actually, when you receive a gift, it is such a loving interaction. So therefore, <coughs> if we don't pay attention to each other, we don't practice this at all. Then the next thing is listening confidentially what the other person is feeling. Sometimes you look somebody's face and you see, oh my God, the person is suffering. Something is making that person very unhappy. Then you look at him and you say, you know something? No, what? You have to tell me what's going on inside of you. I see you are unhappy. You mean you want to hear what, what I'm suffering? That, that is such a relief when somebody cares for you and wants to hear you. 
And then he takes time to give you good ideas, tell you a story, tells you how you feel, you know, something, what happens to you, it happened to me three years ago, you know. And this is how I dealt with it. And, and you're like, <sighs> it's like, <sighs> TLC they call it. Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> TLC. No, uh, TLC means tender love and care. This is, this is so, we forget that. We lose that. Largely, we lose it. The children don't tell their parents anymore what's going on inside. Because they are, why? Why should I ask you? I got Wikipedia, man. Huh? I got Google God. He gives me 20,000 options of answers to any question I have. And you don't know any of them. So why should I ask you? <coughs> so then finally, give some Pushad. Come, take Pushad. I mean, anybody, even when they're depressed, even if they're really like, life is not worth it, and then somebody says, come on, Prabhu, let's take some Pushad. Pushad. <laughs> huh? It's like, uh, it seems to be one of the best medicines, you know. And again, it's the same, you offer Prashad and you invite people for Prashad. This is so important. Somebody is invited by you, come to me, eat with me, sit on the same table with me. Here, what you need? You need the, the butter, you need the... Come on, look. And then somebody comes home and back. I just made these sweet balls last night. Wow. Like yesterday, Ashoka, she blew everybody's mind. Yes or no? Yes. Huh? There was one thing after the other, and another one, and another one. So Prashad is, is such an is such a celebration. And to eat together, just like when we sit on those tables and hey, I like that one. Wow. <laughs> huh? And then there's another feature. Of course this is a little secret, a little illicit. It's called stealing Prashad. <laughs> Stealing Prashad from the other person's plate. <laughs> hey, what did you do? You can't do that. Huh? Hmm? This is pastimes, you know. Stealing from another person's plate. I stole some Shungo Banana <laughs> Yes. He got upset. <laughs> or eating remnants. This is a not so stealing, it's a little bit after. But some people they don't like others to take their remnants. Some people they, they almost lick their plate not to leave anything. You know? huh? Nobody will take it any of my remnants. <laughs> so, <laughs> is, is very, very much all about love. And we lose it. Our children lose it. They're, they're in the prison of the internet. And there's no ras and there's no bath, really. Of course, in the internet, for example, People, they lose their shame. They can say any dirty thing. Sometimes people insult each other. I mean, I've seen that <coughs> on the internet after my spiritual master left the world. Some devotees started insulting each other on the internet with so nasty words. My God, you know. You... 
there were the Pada newsletters and things like that. My God, you know, said thanks a lot. Like people venture their anger against others, frustration, anger, and all. And then it's very dangerous. It's a, it's a, it's a jungle. It's wild. It's. So it doesn't produce positive, positive vibrations. I mean, it's it's because it has everything. It has the good thing and the bad thing. You know. Then of course it's. Mm, what is it? Is it just an instrument? <laughs> like, one time after we studied Facebook. It's already many times ago we said personal Facebook, Facebook, the Buddha shouldn't have. It's not, not at all favorable for the sadhana. But then we also said, but you need a Facebook for your temple. Temples need Facebook. They need to announce their programs and so. So it's just to talk about the internet, how much time it has taken us already. No. It sucks you in. It's 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 so it is it is it has so many new features, and all these features your children know more about than you. Your children can already lecture to you about the internet, most likely. Not only that, they know how to use it. I even had my own Leela with it. Because every time I met my mother, I told her, Mom, get email. I want to be able to be in contact with you sometimes. I'm all around the world. Email is so practical. A written letter, my mom said, No, too much. The computer and all that. I'm old fashioned. <laughs> and so that went on for years. The one time I visited my mother and she said, What's your Facebook? <laughs> I said, Mother, what's that? You're well, I'm, I have Facebook. It changed, it changed everything. So, it even invades the oldest generations, you know. Jai Sisi Guru Guranga Lada Upi Bhaki Jai. Let's let's make a test. Whose mother has Facebook. <laughs> nah, there's the answer, you know. They have reached the children and they have reached the grandmas also. Grandmas, grandpas, everybody sucked in the prison of the internet. Yours too? No? <laughs> they are old fashioned. <laughs> Nowadays you can be proud of saying that. <laughs> so, so, in this connection, I really wonder what we can do for our children. Of course, we are also old-fashioned, no? Mangalarti, give class, organize a temple program, have a Sunday feast. We, we are kind of the old-fashioned people, but, but we are also very much in contact with the modern world by our preaching. So it's, it's a, good, a good question what to do for our children. I don't have to, the answer to tell you the truth. 
I wish I had. I'm working on it. I was working with faith education, oil therapy, all, all in connection with how to provide a different type of of upbringing. Now we hear about the different school styles, the Finnish education style versus the German education, American education. God, that's really bad. I mean, not, not bad, really bad. What's going on in the schools is, is so disgusting. My own father, he was a teacher, he was the headmaster of a school. And as he grew older and the, law, the laws used, started to change, he said, I would never become a teacher again if I know I have to go the way they are forcing us. He was disgusted with the educational system and he was a headmaster. So, and that's a long time ago that he left the world, so the education is really, it's an amazing torture, what we do with our children. So the question is, what are you going to do with your children if you are on Facebook? Very little. You have no time for your children. Therefore, I tell sometimes this, the story which I listened to a long time ago by Hannes Wader. I think he, he sang this song or he told this story. I've told him many times about the two people who were working in a field and they very poor, they were just, whatever they could earn in a day was enough to, to eat and like, like many peasants are, peasants, you know, they work in a fun country, they get just a little money just to survive. So that couple was like that, but they loved each other. So at least they had a couple and they had a child. And that little, little boy child. So, somehow other they were living in some very simple facility on next to the field. So one day they were coming home from the field work and they walked by a tree where they walked by every day and they saw light was coming from under the tree. And they said, hey, what's that? a light under the tree, what's this? So they walked up to the tree and they saw there was a door under the tree. And the door had some windows in the door. So they went close to the door and looked inside. And inside they saw there was a big room and there were like uh, a few dwarves and they were counting heaps of gold coins. And they were counting them, oh, one, two, three. And so they said, they were looking. And they looked at each other. They have so much gold. Maybe they can give us one coin. And we can arrange a better future for our child. And they were very shy. But anyhow, the man knocked at the door. And one of the dwarves came, opened the door. Yes, what's going on? Who are you, my dear friends? And he said, well, you know, we looked here through the window by, by chance. We saw you counting the gold and we are very poor people. And so we just thought maybe, maybe you could give us a coin. And the dwarf smiled and said, you need a coin of gold? Come on, come in. Take as many as you can carry. What? Yes, 
You just take them. As many as you can carry, you can take. We have so many. So he looked at her and she looked at him. Ooh. So they went in and they started filling their dress like this. Another one, another one, and then holding it up and holding it up. Like filling it with... Finally, they had their dress so full of gold coins they could hardly walk. Mm -hmm. And and then the dwarf looked at them. Really? Can't fit in another one? No, no, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really? Yes. Oh, we cannot imagine how to be grateful for you. Okay, said the dwarf. Then you can go now. So they went out of the out of the cave under the tree and behind them the door closed and the light turned off immediately. And as they looked at each other with this gold in their arms, they said, Where's our son? Oh she said I put him on there on the side when we started collecting the gold. And they turned around and locked and knocked. There was everything gone. Never saw their son again. So, this story tells, what is it when the parents both work? They have no more time for their children. Then the children become increasingly angry and angry and angry and angry. At some point they say, forget it. Forget about us. You don't give us the time of the day. You don't give us attention. So, so, and that's on the, the children of our modern society, they are, they are protesters launched in their ignoring whatever good thing you want to give to them. They may not want to take it anymore. It's a harsh story, no? But how much truth is in there? How much truth is that our children hardly have their parents? Hardly get any sweet advice. So therefore, it is it's so important to think about this. How to have our communities responsible? Because I personally think that it's through the Ishta Dev, our Takoji, that we become aware of each other. Krishna loves everyone. So in front of Krishna, nobody can be tortured, nobody can be abused, nobody can even be insulted. I still remember that one time a sannyasi came visiting Germany and he was speaking so badly in his class about the women that some of the Marjitis started to cry. I saw that. I, I, I raised my arm. He said, yes, what you're speaking has nothing to do with Srila Prabhupada. You're totally of the wall, what you're saying. It's not our philosophy. And it's not meant to be preached that way. Wow, this, this guy got angry. He got so angry with me. He cursed me from the asana. <laughs> so, we, are not, we cannot allow anybody to be unhappy. So what do we do? That's why we have to save the family, save the educational system, save our temple, save our sadhana, save our classes. Yes, we should give classes. And we should listen to classes. This is basically what I understand is that the, the basic prop package of bhakti yoga that is so healthy 
that if you keep taking it and participating in it, you have something good for you and your family and your devotional family, I mean. Because we are family. Who are the new bhaktas? They are like children. They are our children. Who are the volunteers? Who are the visitors? They are the potentially, they are just about to come out the womb and have their second birth. Because if they, you know, one thing is to be born, the physical body gets out of the womb and everybody admires, wow, how did this guy came out of your belly? My God, how did you do that? No? And mother is a smile. <laughs> Look what I got here, you know? So that's the first verse. It's always celebrated, no? Nobody goes to a, to, to a person who just had a child, just, hey, what kind of a monster did you bring into this world? No? <laughs> huh? Nobody does that, not even the bad people. Huh? Even the bad people, they say, oh, man, huh? Huh? <laughs> So, it, because it's a, the inner sense of a newborn and the birth and all that. <coughs> but that's the first birth, my dear. What about the second birth? The second birth is if we meet our guru and by contacting him, our spiritual identity is born. And what is that spiritual identity? I am a servant. I am a servant of God. I am eternal. The Lord says in my heart, he's guiding me. I can hear about him from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Srimad Bhagavatam is about him and Bhagavad Gita is his own words. I can sing his name and be in contact with him. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! I can eat his remnants. Oh my God, Prashadam. Hmm? <laughs> He's so much mercy. So amazing, you know? Krishna is amazing. That's why I say the Krishna package. It's, it is quite complete. Plus, don't forget that in the Krishna package, you have to be the Brahmin. You have to be self-determined and self-convinced. Your face has to be intact. Otherwise, you can't practice joyfully. So therefore, in second birth, is big job to be born a second time and having a real identity of who I am. What is my life? <sighs> second birth. I mean, can you, I mean, just think about it. What does it mean? Second birth? You mean I have to come out of the womb again? Huh? <laughs> yes, you know, to get out of this Kali Yuga uh, false ego identification and to be born into the I am servant of Krishna consciousness. That's a big, that's, there's a lot of birth pain, pains connected. And the joy of second birth is so incredible. That's why the, the young kids in the kirtan, they go, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, woo, 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 Hare Moon. Why they dance like that? Nobody pays them for it. Hmm? Because it feels so joyful that we have had a second point, uh, birth. Now, one person may say, why elder devotees often don't feel the same ecstasy? Why don't they say, oh, I have to go to the temple tonight and they will oblige me to chant and dance? No, I don't think I go. Why this happens that elder devotees sometimes lose their ruchi, their taste? Well, there's a reason for that. It's called Vaishnava Parat. It means minimizing others, competing with them. See, no, who is he? He's, I'm better than him when we compete with each other, when we become envious of each other, when we minimize each other, 
Whatever little thing, it may be big, it may, may be small, but whenever you start looking down on others, that's an offense in Krishna consciousness. It's in Vaishnava Aparat. And Vaishnava Aparat is no good. You should never do that. <coughs> Don't look down on others. What to speak of looking down on on the spiritual masters of our Sampradaya, picking faults with each other. You know, anything which is not coming out from a very generous heart, that may be a, a slight apparat. Of course, there's big apparats. You know, like Brigo Muni, you know the story. Vandana made this nice book here. You have to have that book, it's very important. Actually, we published a few children books, also in, 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 in Switzerland, with Gorangi. Those children books, you have to have, you know, you know everything about this and that, but you don't know what we are publishing. Because we are not, the only one who protects our, our literature and all that in Berlin is Ladita Madam. I mean, she's the one who always keeps everything and what's printed and what's recorded and what's this and what's that. She always does that. All glories to Harikata Ashram. But otherwise, you know, we don't even know what we are producing these days. Anyhow, Brigo Muni was testing Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu. Brahma, he simply didn't talk to him. He wanted to beat him up. Shiva, he insulted with his words. He wanted to beat him up. Vishnu, he kicked him in the chest and he grabbed his feet and said, Prigu, I hope my hard chest did not hurt your soft Brahmana lotus feet. But why did Vedas tell us stories like that? What's the message behind? It's very clear, it's the message of love, care, fine, sensi sensitive behavior. That's what it is, it's not a... Krishna consciousness does not endorse bruteness, harshness, unfriendliness, minimizing, criticizing, but because sometimes elder devotees they forget that and they start doing these things. They just lose the desire to be around the other devotees. They lose the desire to give the class. They lose the desire to, uh, to dance in the kirtan. They may even lose the desire to see Krishna, Krishna's deity. <coughs> so second birth. Yes, that's a very, very wonderful thing. <coughs> when you keep appreciating your second birth. I am your eternal servitor, my Lord. I have nothing to do in this world except to serve you. Now my new step of my life is to give more service to all of you by telling you, you know something, my friend? Now you have to do everything I did so far. Huh? Yes, that's how cruel I am. <laughs> Well, it's not supposed to be cruel, it's supposed to be loving. Hmm? Because if you don't do it now, it will not get done. That's what death means when somebody dies. Everybody else has to do everything he was doing, or it will not get done at all. And certain things in life, they have to be done. So when the person who did it before is not there, Got to do it. 
Gotta do it, no chance, no option. So Krishna has inspired me to this step. To make you all feel how important you are in your life and for the people around you. I hope I I hope I was important in somebody's life for serving Krishna. And I want to help you to make that step. So maybe I can from the background. I'll be there through our Guru Deva life. I'll be communicating with you frequently. Well, not that often either because you know, if you watch every day message of the Guru, then you feel, I don't need a Guru. But you need to be the Guru there. Don't say Guru Deva life substitutes the actual transaction of giving care and instructions. No. But I'll go on preaching as long as I can and I'll be there if somebody really needs me. But also I'm not there because you have to do the job. And it is very natural, you know, after 34 years of going around and preaching and getting, getting so many uh, little projects initiated, that's very nice, was very beautiful, but there was a big problem also. The more projects you initiate, the less time you have for each individual, and the less time you have for each project. And then if they depend on you, number one, then they don't get much attention. Then it becomes like, mm, it becomes to say the least, less efficient. And you can say other things like useless huh? or very, very difficult to accomplish what has to be accomplished. <coughs> Because like taking care of your children takes time. Taking care of disciples takes time. Taking care of volunteers takes time. Taking care of visitors of your temple takes time. Like sometimes they bring me a visitor. Oh, this is so-and-so. I say, hey, how are you? Good, good, good. And I'm busy and my mind is not, is not like, I was waiting for you for a million years. And now you have finally come. Let me first of all give you a big hug. And now sit down and tell me about your journey. Like Krishna was talking with Gopa Kumar, no? You know, there was, that was an encounter. If somebody comes to the temple, that should be the quality of reception. When somebody comes, you know, for people coming into the temple, it's like a kind of a daring thing, you know. Who knows what will happen to me in the temple? Huh? And then, then the guys walking up and down, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hey, hi. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. <laughs> What's that? Huh? <laughs> a weird fellow. Well, he's just chanting in Ram's problem. Trying to finish them before going to sleep. So we have to really give the people our love. And that's an ongoing process. You have to give your love today, you have to give your love tomorrow, you have to give your love the day after tomorrow, you have to organize the whatever you do very wonderfully, very nicely. And now you have to provide spiritual shelter. You have to rethink your spiritual shelter situation. 
And if you're not happy with it, if you feel that there's nobody who's going to look after the people adequately, and you trust him and he trusts you also, then you have to pray to Krishna. Says Krishna, I'm going to solve this problem. But I tell you how I solved it. Harichandra Maharaj and myself, we sat down and we were thinking and thinking. At that time was the option that everybody can become a disciple of Srila Bhakti Rakakshi Maharaj. Some people were initiating on his behalf. We looked at each other and said, but he will never come here. And these devotees, they will never come to India. It's too expensive. How can they go there? So if we go for this, if we go for Srila Srila Maharaj's Ritvik initiations, most of these devotees will never ever see their spiritual master. So we thought, no, this cannot be the solution. So what will be the solution? And we finally we both agreed that we would accept disciples if the other would also do it. Like we peered ourselves. You gonna do it? No, only if you do it. No, only if you do it. Huh? It was like that. And we, we didn't feel qualified to initiate disciples because you know we were just young. 12 years in Krishna consciousness, running around selling books and organizing a few things. I mean, and the offers are now we're going to represent the disciplic succession of the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya as being delivered into this world by pure devotees of the caliber of. Uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Goki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, and here we are <laughs> with our 50 Bhagavad Gita verses memorized. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> and we are going to be now responsible for all this. You know? That step of becoming a spiritual master, I would compare it to what they say in this world is called mission impossible. <laughs> this is a mission impossible thing, but sometimes you have to attempt a mission impossible because that's the only way how you can some or other serve the need of the day. <clears throat> And spiritual masters, yes, who's going to be a spiritual master? Who wants to dedicate himself to the welfare of the others? Who's going to do that? Well, Mahaprabhu said all of us should do it. So if you ask Mahaprabhu, don't speculate. He said, Yaritekitai Kata Krishna Upadich. All of you become gurus and serve the people in your area. I mean, there's a, there's a few amongst you I would take initiation from if I had no guru yet. There is a few. And there's a few of you I would take initiation from you if you just clean up your show, means be more strict, have more sadhana, be more caring, do the things you do anyway, but do them more regularly and more with more constancy and so. Because there has to be, I mean, when you have children, you know, like the difference between a little girl playing and getting pregnant and then she becomes a mother and then everything is different <coughs> after you become a mother you are not the same person anymore now your mother you have to always look at this little baby's comfort and make sure it gets fed only you can feed the kid you can't go say I'm going for vacation I've had it no baby is crying so 
In the same way, when you do start having disciples, either Shiksha or Diksha disciples, your life changes. And you have to make sure. And it's so much that sometimes the Guru has to call the disciples by phone because the disciples don't come or something. Just like a father, when his child is not responding to him, what does the father say? Ignore it? No. He goes after him. Hey, my son, what's going on? Why have you not come? <laughs> so if you're, if you're a spiritual master and you have somebody under your care, you have to look after them, phone them up, find out what they're up to. And sometimes they say, you know what I'm saying? No. I'm on a different path now. And you say, well, 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 why? What happened? You never talked to me? No, I didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a very incredible, amazing thing, you know. Like if somebody of my disciples, Prabhupada's disciples, comes to me and say, I don't want to know anything anymore about Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. That devastates me. What do you mean? You don't want to hear anything about Prabhupada. You don't want to follow Srila Prabhupada. You don't believe anymore in Srila Prabhupada. If you tell me I don't believe in you, I would say, well, yeah, I can understand that, you know. Jai Sisi Guru Rangaladam Gopi Balavakita. You can find faults with me, you can, you see, uh, I have bad memory, I'm an old man, whatever, but, but if you have lost your desire to hear about Prabhupada and to be instructed by Prabhupada's teaching, it devastates me. Of course, everybody has its own free will, its own right to make choices of its own what he wants to do with his life. But we want to share the most the most valuable thing, the greatest treasures. Like like Pati comes to me, says Paramatvaiti Maharaj, what is the best thing you have? I know you and I want to get from you the best thing you have. Because I think what's good for you is probably also going to be very good for me. So I'm going to tell him, Pati, the best thing I have is Prabhupada, Krishna, Vrindava, Varsha, books, Sadhu Sangha, devotees, devotees, devotees. And that's what I'm going to share with you. I have nothing else to share. No big bank account giving out inheritance. I mean, that's not valuable. <laughs> you, you have to give to the people who are in your family the most valuable thing you have. Nothing else. And that, now if you say, you know, what you have there, to me it's nothing. I think you wasted your time, now don't waste mine. Huh? Don't kill me. Why you say that? So, and since all these moves in the world of Shraddha, in the move, in the, in the world of faith, it's very amazing, like if somebody says, I don't believe what you believe. I can't say anything about it. I cannot say, you have to believe what I believe. That is not allowed. I can only charm you. <laughs> Come and chant with me, dance with me. Listen to Prabhupada, it's great. Come, let's worship the deities. Let's go to a mela. I can only charm you. 
There's no other thing. I can't blackmail you. Of course, I can say, if you don't practice Krishna consciousness, the consequences may not be very joyful. <laughs> I can say such a thing like that, no? Maya is very heavy. It, it, it can give you a lot of sufferings. And if you give trouble to others, you may actually suffer sinful reaction. And so and so. Or if you commit Vaishnava Parad, one time one devotee spoke something very heavy, heavy. And he said, ah, You're a vegetarian? No, you're not vegetarian. What do you mean, Dad says? You're eating the flesh of other Vaishnavas. Shock. What do you mean by that? When you speak badly, ill, or what to speak of inventing things from others, this is a way of eating them. So if you if you entertain in your mind ill thoughts on, about others, that is a very very bad thing. You shouldn't do that. Because, okay, some people you may not want to help or you may not be able to help, but don't speak badly about them. Don't chew on them. That's one way of, of saying, don't chew on them. means you're eating their flesh, their, you're eating their good name, their reputation, whatever, no? You gossip about them. I know some people, they even do that with their own spiritual master. So this is not good, what to speak of, of doing it with. Those who love you, those who are your God brothers, not good. That's why in the Vinda family, Adamantly, I emphasize that we can have many branches of this family. Each branch will be welcome. If you are the one who is initiating that branch, takes it to heart to give to them what he received from his spiritual master. And each branch should appreciate each other because it is going to be quite an effort to do that. And what does it mean a branch? A branch means another Shiksha Guru. We are all Shiksha Gurus. A branch means another temple. We hope we have many temples. A branch means somebody who can give the Maha Mantra to another person. Because giving the Maha Mantra means spreading the Maha Mantra. And that's what we are doing. Sometimes we do it by Shiksha, sometimes by Diksha. When you do it by Shiksha, you just tell everybody, Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. When you do it by Diksha, you say, Chant this Maha Mantra and anytime you need me, call me. <laughs> That's the difference between Shiksha and Diksha. Shiksha, you can say, Chant Hare Krishna, be happy and bye bye, boy, folks. Huh? And Diksha means, Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Do not commit offense. Follow the principles. Be happy, my friend, and make others happy. <clears throat> and if you need me, call upon me. I'm here to explain you further details. Anything else you know, come to me. Today, tomorrow. So like this, I was available for 34 years. And now I want you to give your time to others who need you. If you think you need more attention, it means you need to give attention to others. There's plenty of needy people in this world. And of course, there's also other sadhus. So appreciate the others. You may say, oh, but I know this devotee now. How is he going to be? the spiritual leader. 
of this or that. This type of thought we should not entertain. We should entertain the thought how mir miraculously Krishna descends through the most diverse personality and reaching out into this world through this stupid his mercy. And that is a fact. It is, a, it is going on. And if anything exists in the Vinda family, it's by this mystical principle that Srila Prabhupada has gone through all of you to so many people. Not even from me. I run around and give a few classes and look, but Krishna has gone through to so many people around the world, to all of you. That's what has happened, and that's what is happened, and that is what will happen in the future. So, not really nothing, so much to worry about. Yes, sometimes we have to change the temple present because he's too spaced out. He's too... Uh, Careless with his people, maybe his administration not so good. Governing board says, please, somebody else become the president. Sometimes we may see that there's one devotee is not really looking after the others or giving a bad example. Sometimes Krishna may have to remove somebody. Definitely. But the call is upon all, even the rhymes, no? The call is upon all to continue the family of Srila Prabhupada. And I feel very strange in a way because it's not that I'm just about to kick the bucket. Of course, you never know. Huh? <laughs> uh, but I see the need of the day very much. I see it, I perceive it. I <coughs> Krishna is telling me, hey, these people have to go into action now. Can't carry them around and let them feel or they don't have to take more responsibility because you'll come next month, next half a year and you'll take care of all the mess. <clears throat> or you'll do the preaching. You will come and give a big university lecture, will preach to everybody, initiate everybody, and then everything will be fine. No, only, th only way things will be fine in your place, in your life, is if you preach and if you get somebody to initiate who is really good to vote you, who you really love. And if you don't find such a person, then you have to think very seriously about maybe you have to give the holy name yourself. Or maybe you got an indication for that. Whatever is the, what is it, whatever is the divine plan. We don't know. But we should not doubt it if somebody else dares to do this is a little bit like the question, you know. Oh, there was such a discussion in this call. My God, who can initiate an Uttama Adhikari, a Madhyam Adhikari, or Kanishta Adhikari? Because obviously in us, we are very quick to point out the Kanishta attitudes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a description, a description, what is a Kanishta, what's a Madhyam, and now, first of all, you you need you need to be one to know one. That's one saying that's very famous. So, in a sense, this discussion that kind of killed the issue, because finally, of course, people say only a sadguru, only an uttama adhikari should give initiation. But then you turn around and send everybody out to preach. Everybody's out there giving the books giving the lectures, giving this and giving that. So, there is a Bhagavata Sampradaya 
which is true, that only the highest devotee they can really save us. And we are very lucky, my friend, because we got that highest devotee on our side. He's Srila Prabhupada. And whatever he did, and whatever he injected into the world, it's still here. His books. I mean, to be honest with you, I can listen more to Prabhupada today and see more of him today than at the time when he was really with us. <laughs> because at that time, there was no tapes, there was no videos, there was nothing. We were so eager to read one letter Prabhupada sent or something like that, you know. Jai Sri Radhe. Just for that. But today you can hear all of Prabhupada's classes, you can hear, uh, see all his videos, you can see all the thousands of thousands of pictures that were taken of Prabhupada alone or with his devotees. And you can visit his temples and you can see the history and you can also study about Sridhar Maharaj, Puri Maharaj. No, I mean, you have so much information available today. A prophet is therefore not really God. His teachings are with us and we should make sure these teachings are alive with us. That means we have to keep his books, we have to read them, we have to listen to his classes. That's a fact. And there's so much more. Spiritual life is so much more. That's why we speak about the third verse. The third verse is very mystical. Now we already spoke about the second verse and how the Guru gives you the second verse. How do you know somebody is your Guru? Well, he has awakened your spiritual enthusiasm. He has awakened your appreciation. He is, has awakened your love for him. You feel good. You want to be with him. That is something you know, something mystical has happened in my life. Now I want to be a devotee. But then there's a third birth. That third birth is when you go by the blessings of your Guru into the altar and you are serving the deity with your own hands. Addressing, changing the dresses of the deity, you giving classes, uh, you uh, offer the food to the deity. Anything you do for the deity, with your own hands, that implies your third birth. Why? Because that's what the soul does in the spiritual world, serving Krishna personally with your own hands. Now, because Archavigraha is Krishna's expansion, if you do this service to the deity directly, something amazing takes place, and that is the inner fulfillment, the inner fulfillment, that now I'm your servant. Sometimes we forget this, that we are servants. Sometimes and very often we forget to give donations. Maybe we make money, but we forget to give donations. We forget to give the classes. We forget to listen to the classes. We forget to chant the rounds. We forget to go to the Sunday feast sometimes even. Sometimes we forget the deities. But when you go and you worship the Lord with your own hands, physically, you know the deities, you, you can paint them. On the deities you make beautiful dresses. You can massage uh, the, some oil in the Shalagram Shila. There's many types of, of, of uh, very intimate service to the deity. That 
is giving you another incredible spiritual dimension. And therefore, we need to be connected to our Ishtadev. The Ishtadev is very important. Even though the altar you have at home and the little deities you have there, they are also your Ishtadev, but most likely they are not installed and they are not worshipped every day. So sometimes you may be negligent with them. And then, of course, it doesn't have the same impact. When you approach the deities which are worshipped, where there are six Brahmins doing seva, no? and the officer, and they say, Hey, you want to come and do an Arctic? You almost tremble, no? <clears throat> and well, how, did, how is it? How does it go? Well, the first Achman. Om Nalai Namaha. Om Malavai Namaha. Om Govindai Namaha. One more cleaning. Hmm? Achman. And, and then, oh, and then it would say, yeah, yeah, and then now what am I supposed to do? Well, take the bell. Sometimes they forget to hear the bell or, or they forget to, to offer the item or they have to do both at the same time, you know. And then you have to count how many times you go around, you know. An Arctic is a quite an entertaining affair, no? Arati, offering with love. Oh, Krishna, I was offering everything. Numbers right, rounds right, bell right, but no love. Wow. I'm going to love you at the same time if I have to talk and then and bell and everything, you know. Haribo. So, 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 so this way, you see, the body is getting engaged. And so, what happened with our Gopananda Bonmarsh? He'll come. He'll come. Oh, he's coming. A bit for him, but he wants to come and get been a little bit very good. So I can, my God, now I'm already running in my two hours here. Huh? Anyway, that helped me to say a few things I wanted to tell you anyway, no? So, <clears throat> so do, do the Arctic, this is like, whoa, whoa, and then do everything and then do the cleaning and the offer. then you offer the food to Krishna. That's also something, hey, Krishna doesn't eat if there's no tulsi leaf. So you want to offer any preparation to Krishna, you better make sure you have a tulsi leaf to put there. Because tulsi is, tulsi is putting everything you don't put. Love. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. She's putting pure love. Because she is Tulsi, and you have little love, but Tulsi is pure love. So if you put the Tulsi leaf, then the offering is perfect. Little details, no? But important details. And wash the Tulsi. Yes. So many things, so many details we do when we do puja. But then it comes to, Prabhu, can you help dress the deities tomorrow? Me? No. What do you mean, no? You're not going to help the deity with his service? I don't know. Huh? Or somebody who is painting the deity's face with beautiful ornaments. These are very intimate. This is, that's why it's called third verse, to worship Krishna with your own hands. It brings about a new type of spiritual dimension in your heart. So in this way, Krishna consciousness has so many elements, so many <clears throat> very sweet, sweet, sweet features. And all those sweet features take you home back to God. So if we are working on behalf of our Guru with a sincere desire to help the others because when you preach to someone, when you meet somebody, that somebody is your guru. This is one drama. <laughs> oh my God, I don't recall it. There was, the guru went on a journey. And he, uh, 
he told to the devotees, now you don't mess up. You look after the temple and don't let anybody come in at night. You just watch, make sure the temple is safe. So Guru said, so in this way, you be a good devotee, you follow the principles, okay? And like that. And the disciples said, yes, Guru Dev, yes, Guru Dev, of course, don't worry about it. It's a drama. We made a beautiful drama out of it. So the Guru leaves on a journey. Disciple stays alone in the temple. And here comes a heavy storm. So while the storm was on, somebody knocks at the temple door. And please give me shelter. Who are you? Oh, I'm a lone woman. I, I was caught by the storm. I'm in great despair. But this is Brahmacharya. Come on, please open the door. Don't let me. And then you hear the mind of the person. No? <clears throat> yes, Guru Dev told me not to open the door at night to anybody. But there's a storm outside. He says, okay, I, I open the door. So a beautiful young woman comes in. Uh, and, and she says, Prabhu, thank you for opening the door. Thank you for being so merciful. Can you give me a place where I can be safe? And tonight, we'll just rest. Tomorrow I'm going to go on my journey. And he says, wow, what are you going to do now? A woman here in my ashram. Mm. He says, okay. That room over there, you can go in there and you lock the door from inside, okay? She said, thank you, Prabhu, thank you. <laughs> she goes in the room. And now she's in the room. He is there. I said, oh, this woman, she must be cold. She just came out from the, from the rain. So he goes and knocks. Do you need a blanket? No, Prabhu, I'm fine, I'm fine. Huh? Hmm. So he goes and sits down. But she must be pretty lonely also, no? Yeah, man, look. This is, is all the way in the night here, no? So, again he knocks. Do you want to drink some hot tea? I have some, I can make some tea. Huh? And she says, no, no, probably it's okay. I'll just let me sleep. So he goes back and sits down. Wow, she don't want a tea, she don't need a blanket. She's so renounced. Oh. <clears throat> mm. So, and also she's pretty beautiful girl, no? Uh, so, so, <clears throat> he goes crazy and crazy and finally knocks the door. Please open the door, please open the door. I wanted to give you something, show you something about our temple and she doesn't open so finally he rips open the door and when he goes in there he sees his guru is sitting there <laughs> that's called test <laughs> so what a test is that that to see the guru in everyone i mean the guru comes to you in the form of the people who come to you he comes to you he asks you for quick for answers he he wants prashadam he wants some care he you see, who are, who's the guru? Who's your guru? Samananda got a bunch of gurus coming in every day in, in, in Nimai Husit. And he's busy writing. <laughs> Come back night, there's a class at evening. Yes, Prabhu, no time for me? No time? Okay, come here, sit down. What's, what, what is it you need to know? Each person who you come in contact with in Krishna consciousness is your guru. Your guru is coming to you in this way. Prabhupada is coming to you to test us. Are you seeing me everywhere or not? 
For one who sees me everywhere, sees everything in me, I never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. It's special, you know. Every person is special. Every person is important. Every person is Krishna's representative at a certain moment in a certain proportion. And if you're not ready for it, you failed. Like Raman Reddy, he looked so nice after his son. All the life, all the year, always son, 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 son. But how many other children are like your son who are also your children? They're not less your children. This is, is actually something which you, we has to lesson. No? At some point in life you have to learn that it's not only your children who are important for you, but everybody comes in contact with you, with you, especially if they're lesser advanced, then they're also your children. If you can give them help, if you can show them the way to safety, shelter, maha mantra, prasadam, transcendental literature, if you can show them the way and you neglect it and you don't do that, then who are you? Why, cannot, why can't you see that Krishna has come to you in this form to test you? But if you see life in this way, you know, then every moment becomes significant. Then there is not anything like a boring day. Oh, I don't know what to do. Huh? The famous mantra. I do not know what to do. I do not know what to do. Can you give me some idea what to do? Oh. I am so confused about what to do that finally I do nothing. Well, that's also something. It's also an aggression. Doing nothing is an aggression. So what to do? We have to get our service from Sri Guru. <coughs> Sri Guru tells what to do. Also rhymes, no? Sri Guru tells what to do. Serve Guru in all. Give Krishna to all. Starting with your family, of course. Of course you give Krishna to your family. It's the most natural thing to do. But then you have to understand the greater family. And everybody's part of your family. You know why? What problem you have to accept others in your family? You even accept a dog in your family. Anybody has a puppy dog? The dog is like, wow. Hey puppy, come puppy. Take puppy in the arm and you don't want my puppy or my puppy. Poor dog. Huh? But definitely the dogs are accepted in the family when, they're, when, when this is going on. So if a dog can be accepted in your family, why not this child? Why not this, this, this lonely person? Why not this uh, unfortunate living being? And what does it mean to accept somebody in your family? Well, in Krishna consciousness it means you try to provide them with all the help possible that they can take up spiritual life. If they want to take it up. But in the beginning, people don't know what is spiritual life. So how somebody can take up spiritual life if he doesn't know what is spiritual life? And if you don't tell him what is spiritual life, so then what is his chance? So what is the final conclusion? Pracha. Preach! I don't know how to preach. Come on, you don't know how to give somebody a book and tell them, please take this book and read it. 
You can't say that? Are you that dumb? Huh? You cannot say, please read this, this book, says, book is incredible, it tells you all about life and the responsibility and the beauty. Now please read it and tell me what you think about it. You can't do that. Or you're just a lazy bum. You don't want to do anything. But you don't, you can preach, you can sell a book, you can give a class, you can give a consolation. You can do dadati pratigrinati guya makyati prichati. Whatever you do, like oida therapy is guya makyati prichati. In oida therapy, you listen to people and you give good advice in order to awaken spiritual joy and hope. I mean, last but not least, our preaching is nothing but making friends. Can't you make a friend? Can't you be friendly? Come on, smile. <laughs> Get your cheeks up. Mm -hmm. Don't make this rock face when you talk to people. Huh? Welcome. Welcome into my life. Yeah? You mean you welcome me into your life? Hey, into your life? Wow. What an experience. So making friends, making friends for Krishna, making friends for the Guru. Because they have to be friends of the Guru, they have to trust the Guru if they want to learn from him. If you tell somebody, don't talk to this guy, no, no, he's terrible. Well, then they will not listen to him. What you say is so important. In life, everything is important. Every word is important. Even every gesture is important. You can kill somebody with a look. Or not. Definitely. <coughs> like somebody comes to you, oh, I'm going to give the, I'm going to go and hear the class of this guy. And he's, You're going to hear the class of this. No, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. Huh? <laughs> With one look, you can kill his chance of 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 going and getting a sadhu sangha, associating, not associating. So, our business is making Krishna friends. But then, after they become Krishna friends, then the job starts. And where's the prasadam? And where to sit? And where to sleep? And where to dress? and how to go to India, and how to do this. Don't worry, just ask Krishna Kirtan, he'll tell you. <laughs> this, is, this is like, oh no, better ask Prem Kishore. Huh? Prem Kishore, he is really good in all that. Huh? How to get people to India, and how to do this, how to do that. Every temple president, that is what the temple president is, providing services providing friendship, providing love, providing consolation, providing Guru Tattva, Guru Ashraya, providing all that which the people in the world need so much. They hardly know it. They hardly know it. It's unbelievable that there is such a place of shelter as Prabhupada has provided for us. One time a person came from a Krishna family and he stayed in the temple and then he got upset with, he fought with one devotee, he says, no. He was already initiated, so he said, I'm going to join the Christian monastery. So he left the temple. It was a 30 year old man, he was quite okay. Well, well, good family, well educated, and he went to all the monasteries in Colombia, which were there, and none of them would accept him. After a few weeks, he came back. He said, "Nobody wants me. I have to come back here." <laughs> they made so many conditions, which he, for some reason, could not fulfill. No, so. It's not easy to even join the monastery, you know.
By his luck, nobody wanted him. So Krishna consciousness providing Guru Ashraya. This is our preaching. And now Guru Ashraya. Who are the sannyasis who are going to give their life to the disciples? And maybe it's not a, a sannyasi, but maybe a grihasta is there who actually does it. Who is actually opening his heart to the people day and in and day out. Wow. Like sometimes people have this notion of surrender. Like yesterday one devotee was telling me, I don't know if I should get married. I have the feeling that I could also be a, a full, fully sold out uh, preacher and giving Krishna to people. Well, what do I say about that? Sounds great, no? Somebody wants to renounce his personal comfort simply to live for others. What's brahmachari? What is brahmacharini? It is living for others. That's what the temple is. The temple is the living place for all. Only the Grihastha can say, hey, this is my private room. Don't enter there. Here I'm staying with my kids and, and maybe I open my home for a program once a week or once a month for Namahata, but otherwise, wait, this is my private area. Yeah, Grihastha can say that. But if you're a Grihastha, do not forget that you also have to provide some Guru Ashraya space for others by helping a temple. You have to participate, okay? You don't do it at your home, okay? Then you help somewhere else. What's the big deal? But providing Guru Ashraya, Brahmachari life, Sanyasi life means I live for others. I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I don't want to have a mention. You know, when the people in this world, they're a little richer. Huh, you know what they do? They want to make a temple of their ego. If you go to the richer neighborhoods and you look at the houses, palaces, each one a palace of his own, with some individual characteristic, a little dome here, a little this or a little that, a little crystal glass, but everything is like, my palace, that's where my ego lives. <laughs> a Hankara palace was constructed. Yes, of course, I got money, so I have to show to the people outside a real big ego is living in here, you know? And, and sometimes the ego is so big, not only a palace, also a wall. Not only a wall, also the wires who go like this, it starts looking like a prison. And then, <coughs> then you got the guard outside, no? so make sure, check everybody wants to come into your home. No? And don't forget, between the wall and the house, there's at least two Doberman. No? <laughs> You don't want to come and see my boss. Huh? So, that's what the neighbors or neighborhood look like of the rich people. <laughs> All their life, building a mansion. And then if the poor guy has so much money, then he has to have a mansion in Long Island, and a mansion in, in Copacabana, and a mansion in London. Because, I mean, you're poor. You have so much money to spend, so you have to make your mansions everywhere. And not to mention that in the mansion nobody lives, except the guard. One time I had a sannyasi. He left his sannyas ashram. And then some other, <laughs> it was very funny, he came to America and he was put in charge of a golden prison mansion. There was a rich man in Long Island. He had such a mansion, you cannot even imagine so 
powerful, huge swimming pools, game rooms, two Mercedes Benz sitting in the garage, everything like the topple, 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 huh? And the guy only came once a week, once a year for two weeks to this house. But this ex Sanyasi was the housekeeper. <laughs> so we, we all laughed about it, you know. So so after you get the golden jail experience, no? <laughs> you can look at everything. It's not yours, but you can enjoy it. No? And you can have it all, but it's not. No. Krishna is funny, you know. <laughs> Sometimes Krishna is real funny, you know. We laughed so much. And he invited me. I visited him in that mansion. I stayed there for a day with him. We, we just couldn't stop laughing. Everything was just like a joke. <laughs> now he's not living there anymore. He's doing something very valuable. <laughs> Constructing temples again. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yes, the big ego mansion. And it's the same in Hungary, you got the ego mansion. In Austria, you got the ego mansion. In, in America, you got the ego mansion. There, they are usually made out of sky rock wood or something. Like, not out of stones. Like in Europe, we have real mansions. No? Sheet rock. Sheet rock is just some teeny little thing in America. They made everything from sheet rock. So, this is what this material world is all about. We make an ego mansion or we make a Guru Ashraya connection. And the Guru Ashraya connection is what Vinda is all about. We provide places where people can take shelter. We provide places where people can eat prashad. We provide places where people can listen to classes. We provide places so people can listen, uh, come to melas. We provide places that people can become friends of Krishna and feel fired up. Like Govinda was telling me yesterday, oh, I want to bring all my God brothers here. This is a big festival, so nice. Why they are not having this chance, no? So, because providing an, an atmosphere of love and trust is so important. It's so extraordinary. So wonderful, so unique. And that's what we do, that's our job. We also have a job, not in the system. If you go to the military, you also have a job. Let's not talk about that job, but if you go and work for the, for the town hall, you also have a job. Town hall. If you work for the finance minister, you also have a job. But in all these jobs, you are not important and you're not allowed to think. But in this job here, you're supposed to think, do, organize, and do everything. <laughs> huh? In the Krishna job, you are, you're fully responsible. And you're off the grid. Means you're off the support system of this mundane world. You're in your own Krishna world. Of the grid means of the uh, electricity and the, the water supply. No, but we, you're of a different grid. You're of the individual psychological uh, knowledge grid of this mundane system. By Prabhupada's grace, he took us out from that. He says, come here be independently thoughtful. You must become a Brahmin. A Brahmin is individually, independently thoughtful. You know what I mean? <laughs> it means you have to make up your mind, your heart, your feelings and everything and come to a conclusion. What 
kind of work you're going to do to help the others. What is it? What, what is your participation going to be that others find shelter and happiness in the divine dimension? This is very wonderful. I mean, I have worked for this in poor countries with no money, no finances coming from rich members, no Indians, because Indians sometimes are generous. No, just a very difficult thing, and Krishna has always provided something. Always, always Krishna has provided something. Something humble, and sometimes Krishna provides Palaces for the devotees. You come and you go, what's that? That's Krishna's palace, my dear. Can you imagine that? Krishna's providing a palace. Can somebody, uh, Paramatma, can you please bring the picture Vandana painted? I want to show it to the devotees. She when took I it back? It. No, it's in the temple, no? No, no, she took, she took. You took it? Yes, one second. Well, you, took, you took the picture again? Yeah. Anyhow. She took it. She took it, Gurudeva. It is still secret. It is still a secret pic picture of the seven mothers which are in charge. And we do. It will end up in the temple. So you have to all come back to Nanda Falfa to see it. I think this is Vandana's trick. So that everybody has to come back to see this, to see the holy rivers and the seven mothers here in the temple. Huh? Maybe, maybe she made frame. <coughs> so, yes. Is there any question on your side? I don't know, Gopananda Bhagavan, this is 8.30 today. I think he, he, he skipped the class. Huh? <laughs> yes, come on. Different in any way when you're doing a puja to a picture of Radha Krishna or some other thing. Yes, there is a big difference, but both of them are wonderful. You worship a picture of Krishna, he, the, that's a very nice thing. But the deity is Archavigraha, he is installed, he's dealt with as Krishna being personally present. Krishna is also present in the picture, but you just don't do it that way because there's too many pictures and you, it's impractical. So basically when the devotees worship the Lord in the form of a deity, it becomes like a, a whole commitment, a whole, uh, it, it goes on every day and it, it, it's, it's very tasking. You can ask Prem Kishore, he can tell you all about it. What does that mean when you have a deity and, and like that? Now, Harijan has not come today, so open day. I'm sure there's many instructions to be given also. Uh, open day means it's a day for people to come here and uh, of the area, the local town hall, the embassy, the Indian embassy is coming. And so... Uh, So always try, like if we have a picture, we also connect to the deity of the picture, usually, in one way or another.
the other day talking about talking about Krishna providing. The other day I went to Mexico and Lord Krishna provided us there with a preaching place which is for 1534, a building constructed in 1534. Can you believe it? The time when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on this planet. And this is a restored mansion. It used to be a, a monastery of the Carmelite uh, monks. And it it's a huge place, and Krishna just gave it to us. Make a program for Krishna here. In the middle of Mexico, right next to the heart of Mexico. 